Hello everybody, what's up, what's going on, and welcome to the 93rd episode of Raptors of One. Uh, I know it's been a while because um, I didn't find anything newsworthy to talk about, um, but I did find something that I was kind of wrestling with uh, if I wanted to express my opinions on this, uh, but I figured, you know what, it's about time, and I also happen to see uh, the Twitter world recently about one of our Supermax extensions, and uh, I'm going to talk about this individual as well. So, without any further ado, let's get it. So guys, um, I just wanted to talk about uh, the recent signing that the Raptors did, and this is with uh, signing the veteran Garrett Temple. Uh, we acquired him from New Orleans Pelicans for $3 million for one year. He's a one-year rental for $3 million. Now, um, when I first saw the signing, uh, I am familiar with Garrett Temple uh, primarily as a potential Raptor killer. So when I say potential Raptor killer, he had more games against the Raptors killing the Raptors uh, as opposed to not killing the Raptors. Having said that, I thought, you know, uh, the reasoning for the signing to me was a little ridiculous. Um, that's just my opinion. I know, I know, uh, uh, from what I've been observing on Twitter, as well as, um, uh, you know, some of the, some of the sportscasters and the beat writers, they're, what they're talking about this signing, it's kind of split right in the middle where 50% of the people think, oh yeah, you know, the signing for Garrett Temple, uh, this is definitely going to help us, you know, and, uh, and 50% were like, we just we just literally had three million lying around. We're like, how do we get rid of it? Let's just sign this guy. Um, I'm kind of teetering towards the we have the three million lying around. Let's just throw it on this guy. Um, honestly, uh, maybe New Orleans fans would uh, appreciate him more than uh, more than I do. But I honestly don't think we really needed the guy. The reason why, apparently, according to the front office, why they picked him up was because he see he's a team player. You know, he's a really good team guy, real good glue guy, especially in the locker room. Uh, you know, and he would be his services would be appreciative more in mentoring the young talent. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I think that's just excuse for like, hey, we we have three million. <laughs> Again, I, that's just me. We have three million lying around. I'm throwing it on Garrett Temple. Um, now, I did happen to kind of look up his stats. His field goal percentage in the low 40s, not so impressive. Uh, but again, we're not expecting much out of him either. Um he does have a decent three-point percentage, and uh, I feel like, okay, you know, they probably thought uh, of getting him for, like, a 3 and D kind of person. Uh, kind of, re like, his stats kind of reminded me a little bit of Danny Green's. Uh, I just hope uh, he can be a lot better than Danny Green in the playoffs if we make it there. As for the As for his services in the locker room and outside the game and maybe even in the game, um, I'm, I'm skeptical about this one, uh, just because again, it's Garrett Temple. Like, you know, how many people have heard of Garrett Temple, right? Uh, I've, I've heard of him. I've seen him play too. And like, he used to be good. I think he's at the tail end of his career. And again, to, you know, the kind of, oh man, this really does bother me. I, I, I hate to say it. I, I don't, I don't like this signing. I, I'll, I'll be straight up and honest. Uh, just because the kind of veterans you want um, around your team, especially if they if you want them mentoring your um, your younger players, would be like a Udonis Haslam, um, now or or even like a, um, a Kevin Garnett. You know, I get it. We're not going to get these kind of players, and I, for some weird reason, nobody wants to come around Toronto. Um, Jamal McGlure, he's a pretty good guy, right? Uh, he's definitely a veteran. I know he's on the staff, but he can definitely help mold the younger players. But again, uh, 
the kind of players that I mentioned, like Udonis Haslam, like Kevin Garnett, uh, these guys are, you know, they're, 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 they're strong, outspoken individuals. With the youth today, that's not going to work. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're just going to drive them away, especially when the kind of youth that we're getting in the NBA at the moment. When you throw millions of dollars on cash with them and they have that freedom now, they don't know what to do. And uh, if you like, and I hate to say it, youth, I'm not talking in general um, because I have seen some very stand up young men and women as well. But uh, for the most part, you know, TikTok is proof, YouTube is proof. You see all the youth, most of the youth there, they've got that sense of entitlement and they lack discipline and mental resiliency, 100%. So when you have strong personalities like KG and Udonis uh, guiding your youth, you will push them away. And I believe that's what happened with Thad Young, uh, especially that little altercation, altercation, quote unquote, between Thad Young and Scotty Barnes. Um, cause again, Thad Young, the way he is, he, you know, he's kind of built different and I have a feeling that's the same kind of disconnect that Fred had with the young players of the team. Fred was trying to be that vocal leader, that tough personality, but it doesn't. And at least with the Raptors young core, I guess it didn't work. There has to be another way to, uh, reach out to these young young people and to these young men and have them buy into the system. And of course, even Nick Nurse and his, uh, the plays that he has, the system that he has, you know, and that's why there's a culture change that's happening right now. I still don't think Garrett Temple is the answer. Anyway, um, th that's all the time I'm going to do. I'm going to spend on Garrett Temple. Uh, hi, how I, however, was, um, taken aback, but at the same time, I'm going to talk about Fred's contract and how it makes sense in today's NBA. So, um, there's a lot of money flowing in the NBA. My goodness. Uh, you know, some of the contracts, even like Dylan Brooks contract, uh, and Fred's contract, I was like, man, these guys are getting overpaid for being what? Like, you know, Fred, Fred is a good point guard. He's not an elite point guard. He's getting elite point guard money. And Dylan Brooks, like, this guy almost played himself out of the NBA into the Shanghai Sharks. But the next thing you know, he's getting in a contract, right? And, and it got me thinking. I'm like, what's going on? And surely enough, it's the money, the influx of money that's coming into the NBA now. Now, all of a sudden, all these athletes can get paid a lot more for their services. And I know people are going to be like, oh, bro, where have you been? Trust me, I get it. But at the same time, what I have seen on Twitter just today was Anthony Davis's contract extension. So he was getting paid about roughly around 38, 39 million per year for five years for his services in LA. Well, guess what? Now he's going to get paid He's, he signed his three-year contract extension. And if you divvy up the full sum of those three years um, into like three years, three separate years, he's getting paid $62 million a year. Whoa. Right? I mean, oh, wow. And, and I'm wondering, like, how does LeBron fit into all of this? But, I mean, forget about LeBron. Like, it is what it is. Maybe he's taking a pay cut. I don't know. But he has the richest contract in the NBA at the moment. 62 milli a year, man. 62 milli. That's just crazy. I don't know what to think. Um, and then it got me thinking. And I was like, you know what? Now Fred's contract is starting to make a whole lot of sense. So he's getting 40 million a year. It's working up to be 40 million a year, 40 or 42, I think something around there. But it's starting to make sense now. Now, ladies and gents, Raptors fans, you're going to be thinking, well, you better not be comparing Freddie with Anthony Davis. Yeah, yes, you can. And I'm telling you how you can compare them. Yes, they play different positions. 
I'm not comparing their physical attributes or in how they impact the game, their star status, nothing like that. But when you put it in the context of money that's coming into the NBA, it makes a whole lot, lot more sense now. So Anthony Davis is one tier. Like, let's say he's the superstar tier. He's probably at the bottom of the superstar tier. And the reason why I say he's at the bottom of the superstar tier is because of his injuries. So think about this. If he's at the bottom of the superstar tier and he's getting 62 milli, what do you think players like Nikola Jokic, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, um, uh, LeBron James, these players, what are they going to demand? Well, yeah, they're probably looking at that 60 milli mark too per year, man. Per year. Wow. So, oh, uh, man. When I saw that, I was like, okay, now Freddy's 40 or 42 million, whatever it is, per year makes a whole lot of sense. Compared to that 62 milli, it really is chump change. Really. Really. Um, again, that's just my opinion. But I'm backing it up with facts, man. The numbers speak for itself. I mean, that's why, that's why Dame is probably looking for like, you know, uh, 58, close to that 60 milli mark himself, right? I wouldn't be surprised if he wanted more than 60 milli there. So that's got to be something very interesting to watch out for. Um, I wonder what Jimmy Butler is going to get when he's ready for his contract extension talks or free agency. That's going to be, free agency is going to be nuts, man. Oh, the amount of money that's flowing into the NBA, it's just nuts. I think, you know what? Good for Freddie. Good for Freddie. I'm glad, you know, uh, I do agree with front office. I still wouldn't give him 40 million, but I do, I can, I agree with Houston's front office as well. Freddie does deserve that 40 million if somebody like Anthony Davis can make 62 million. Okay. Just saying. That's just my opinion. So that's all I got for today, folks. Again, if you like this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up button. And of course, if you have any comments, don't forget to hit the comment section. But of course, keep it respectful. Until next time, I'm out.